Hello students, welcome to the lecture on understanding petroleum retail business and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the general concepts of retailing, explain the wheel of retailing, describe building brands. Let's start with the concept of understanding petroleum retail business. The petroleum industry occupies an unusually prominent place in every country's economy. As with few other products, consumers are acutely aware of variations in the price of gasoline and home heating oil. Not only do changes in the prices of these commodities affect consumers directly, supply conditions for petroleum products also influence many sectors of the economy. Perhaps no other industry's performance is so visibly and deeply felt. Over the past two decades, the petroleum industry has undergone a structural upheaval punctuated by a burst of large mergers in the late 1990s. Various forces have spurred the transformation. Technological, economic and regulatory factors have led toward reliance on a smaller number of larger, more sophisticated refineries that can process different kinds of crude oil more efficiently. The development of crude oil spot and futures markets has reduced the risks of acquiring crude oil through market transactions relative to ownership of crude oil extraction and production assets contributing to a decline in vertical integration between crude oil extraction and production and refining among the major oil companies. Petroleum retailing industry is one of the most competitive in the world. Despite this, industry practices in gasoline retailing continue to be controversial. In part, this controversy occurs because integrated refining companies use a variety of distribution methods to maximize their efficiencies while moving gasoline from the refiner to the consumer. These different distribution methods can come into conflict with each other. The goal of this chapter is to examine why integrated refiners use different distribution methods how those methods are manifested in retailing and pricing of petroleum products and the important policy issues that surround those distribution and retailing choices. Let us now discuss the general concepts of retailing. The word retailing has its origins in the French verb retailer which means to cut up and refers to one of the fundamental retailing activities which is to buy in larger quantities and sell in smaller quantities. For example, a convenience store would buy tins of beans in units of two dozen boxes but sell in single tin units. However, a retailer is not the only type of business entity to break bulk. Wholesalers also buy in large quantities and sell to their customers in smaller quantities. There are, however, many businesses that carry out retailing activity that are not in themselves classified as retailers. For example, a factory may engage in retailing activity by selling second quality goods in the shop attached to its manufacturing premises. The term retailing applies not only to the selling of tangible products like loaves of bread or pairs of shoes but also to the selling of service products. Companies who provide meals, haircuts and aromatherapy sessions are all essentially retailers as they sell to the final consumer and yet customers do not take goods away from these retailers in a carrier bag. The consumption of the service occurring coincides with the retailing activity itself. Retailing is a vast and fast industry. It provides a diversity of size and character of business rarely encountered in other industry sectors. Retailers not only contribute to the general economy, but they are also part of the fabric of society itself. In this unit, the increasingly dominant role that the retailer plays in the distribution of products to consumers has been explored along with the resulting evolution in the general structure of the industry. 
the modern retail industry provides a challenging arena for dedicated and multi-skilled managers providing both financial and personal rewards that are only limited to an individual's ambition. When retail started, it was a marketplace. You, know, you came in because of location, proximity to your house. Um, it was, they were selling commodities, but it was personal. You went to the market to a particular preparator because he knew you, knew your preferences, and there was a sense of uh, personal exchange. Over time, we've seen that retail kind of moved away from that because it was more based on geographic coverage, location, and then it kind of went a little bit more to be promotion driven, and we lost a little bit of that personal touch. I think we're going full circle, where both the retailer and the consumer are looking for that sense of personal link. And it's not going to be necessarily going to be driven by the proprietor, but it's going to be enabled through technology, providing the right data to the retailer so they know who you are. The main objective is, is as a shopper, you want to go even to a big store, make it feel small. You want to go to a place where traditionally you're one of every other customer. You want a personal service. You want to have information that is relevant to you. You want the person on the other side of the table be able to recognize you as a consumer, understand your needs, understand your wants, understand your, your, your shopping habits, and be able to react to you and offer information that is re relevant to you. I mean, I think that retailers are recognizing more and more that the experience in the shopping element or path to purchase is becoming more important. In the past, there might be an element of price competition, or maybe it was location. Everyone always said location, location, location. But in this day and age, uh, a consumer can get anything they want, anytime they want, anywhere they want. And really, what retailers are recognizing is that it becomes that consistent shopping experience, that, that element of service and ability to provide the consumer what they want as far as information uh, that becomes even more important. The big trend that we see uh, that we're actually uh, working with our customers to develop is, is a radical shift of the division between the knowledge work in retail and the task work in retail. We see that line completely disappearing. Every retail employee will become a knowledge worker. What do I mean by that? As long as you can put the right information in their hands to be able to make the quick decisions and really react as counterintuitive as that sounds, react to what your business needs in the moment, you'll make better decisions. You, your employees will be more productive and, by your, and your customers will be significantly happier. The retail store is not going away. Many shoppers, I would say most shoppers, view the retail environment, physical environment, as central to the shopping experience. What's changing is the expectations of what that shopping experience should look like and feel like from the consumer point of view. So as technology providers and as retailers, we just need to step back and look at the expectations from the customer's point of view. What do you and I expect that journey to look like? And if we do that, it's gonna be a blend of store design and merchandising and experience that are, that are technology enabled. The retailer within the distribution channel from a traditional marketing viewpoint, the retailer is one of many possible organizations through which goods produced by the manufacturer flow on their way to the consumer destiny. These organizations perform various roles by being a member of a distribution channel. For example, a chocolate producer like Cadbury's will use a number of distribution channels for its confectionery which involves members such as agents, wholesalers, supermarkets, convenience stores, petrol stations, vending machine operators, and so on. Over time, and particularly since the laws that allowed manufacturers to set prices were abolished, retailers have become more dominant in the distribution channel. Their passive distributor status has been transformed into a more aggressive one, using price as a competitive weapon, introducing ranges of own branded goods, private labels, and developing shopping environments that engender loyalty to an outlet rather than loyalty to a product. The Vertical Marketing System 
Although the traditional distribution channels are used in many instances to get products to consumers, there are a large number of marketing approaches that do not fit neatly into this model. Levi Strauss, for example, has a large network of shops through which their own merchandise is sold. Their retailing activities are, in a marketing sense, of equal importance to their manufacturing activities, irrespective of the financial contribution of each activity, and the two facets of the business are highly integrated. The vertical marketing system usefully depicts a more realistic view of the retail industry in developed economies. Many large multiple retailers in India like Reliance, Mega Mart, Moore, Spencer's and Bharti Walmart are actively involved in marketing functions that were at one time left to producers such as product development, branding and advertising. Conversely, Many producers are involved in retailing activities either by running retail outlets dedicated to their own merchandise or by performing functions that at one time were the preserve of the retailer such as allocating shelf space. The retail industry contribution to the economy moving away from the role of retailing in the marketing activity of an individual producer Retailing activity can also be viewed as a significant contributor to the economy in general. In the last two decades of the 20th century, the many developed nations have seen their economies change from being manufacturing-led to being service-led in terms of wealth creation, employment and investment. Around one-third of consumer expenditure takes place through retail outlets and the retail industry employs one in nine workers. The retail price index is a frequently referred to economic indicator. It is a measure that is based on a basket of product across all retail sectors and compares prices over time in order to retail the changes in the cost to households of typical purchase needs. The retail business in India is estimated to grow at 13% from INR 16,100 billion to INR 29,500 billion by 2011 to 2012. In the same time, the unorganized retail sector is expected to grow at about 10% per annum with sales turnover rise from INR 15,450 billion in 2006 to 2007 to INR 24,800 billion in 2011 to 2012. Retailing is one of the pillars of economy in India and accounts for 35% of the GDP. A global viewpoint retailing is increasingly a global business. A more structured retail industry with more multiple retailers, those with more than one outlet is a sign that an economy is developing as organizations specialize and gain economies of scale. Additionally, when disposable incomes rise, retailers play an active part in distributing increasingly discretionary goods to centers of population. Emerging markets are a real, although highly complex, opportunity for experienced retailers, especially if they are faced with high levels of retail provision and therefore competition in their traditional markets. As the artificial barriers to trade, such as important duty and quota restrictions are removed from the global economy, Many retailers will view the world as their marketplace and make sourcing and outlet operation decisions on a set of criteria that are relevant across the globe. Some of the strongest global retailers are such as Walmart, IKEA, Marks and Spencers, Big Bazaar and some modern age retailers are having considerable success on a global basis such as Tesco, B&Q, care for, etc. However, long distances, political and cultural complexities are huge challenges to retailers which can only be overcome by the strongest contenders. High provision and market saturation. The concept of high level of retail provision means that the customers have a large number of choices in terms of retail outlets from where they can make purchase goods. 
classically, a retail provision is a measure of density of retail outlets available per capita of population in a well-defined and measurable geographical area. It is a metric which looks into the phenomena of market saturation. Concentration aspects of retailing. Another interesting facet of a retail market is called concentration. This is parameter whereby retail concentration level is defined by the phenomena where a small number of competitive outlets share a very large percentage of sales. This is a concept borrowed from chemistry which measures strength of an asset or a solution. In classical terms, both monopolistic and oligopolistic markets can be termed as highly concentrated. However, it is difficult to find such market structures in the retail sector. Concentration can clearly be seen in the merchandising verticals of the G8 countries. In India, even though the organized sector is its nascent stages, the forces of market concentration are visible. There is a reasonable amount of market upheaval which has led to closing down of some retail chains such as Subiksha. Some mergers and acquisitions have also taken place. A recent example is the acquisition of Vishal Megamart. Diversity of retailing. The retail industry has always been a proponent of diversity. Formats are diverse, ranging from mom and pop shops to friendly neighborhood stores to special outlets to large supermarkets or hypermarkets. There is no cookie cutter approach to success in retailing. There have been examples of successful retail businesses run by a single person as well as those run by multinational corporations employing thousands of people. The nature of the segment is such that it is possible even in concentrated sectors dominated by large organizations that a nibble innovative player can exploit a strategic gap to find opportunities to develop retail business. One such example is the organic food market or market opportunities under the fair trade label. The multiple retailers, most high street retailers, fall into the category of the multiple retailer which is the term applied to retail organizations that have a central operational headquarters and a collection of branch stores under common ownership. Most, although by no means, all multiple retailers are public limited companies and are therefore owned by a collection of shareholders to whom the directors of the company are responsible. Private multiple retailers are sometimes family owned and run businesses and allow for a greater degree of personal operational control than in a publicly owned business. The size of the business will be related to the number of branch stores and the size of those stores. A small multiple retailer is one which runs between 10 and 50 stores after which is termed a large retailer. The multiple retailers is a term that can only really be applied to store based retailers or to the store based retailers or to the store side of the business and therefore this term may lose its meaning in the future as more retailers become multi-format organizations. Franchises in retailing. Franchises are operated on the basis of an agreement between two separate business organizations. One, the franchiser provides a product and or a retail format whilst the other provides the means by which an outlet is run. The franchisee provides the human resources and the finance required for the premises is responsible for the operations management of the outlet and pays a royalty to the central organization. The problem with this type of organization is that the issue of ownership and control is often the cause of disputes between franchiser and franchisee. Online retailing or e-retailing Online retailing is achieved real predominance in the heady days of dot-com ventures and a great sobering effect post debacle of the dot-com bust in the years 2000 to 2001.
Now moving on to the next topic, we will talk about the wheel of retailing. As per wheel of retailing theory, retail innovators often first appear as low price operators with low costs and low profit margin requirements. Over time, the innovators upgrade the products, they carry and improve their facilities and customer service by adding better quality items, locating in higher rent sites, providing credit and delivery and so on, and prices rise. As innovators mature, they become vulnerable to new discounters with lower costs, hence the wheel of retailing. The wheel of retailing is grounded on four principles. There are many price sensitive shoppers who will treat customer services, wide selections and convenient locations for lower prices. Price sensitive shoppers are often not loyal and will switch to retailers with lower prices. However, prestige sensitive customers like shopping at retailers with high end strategies. New institutions are frequently able to have lower operating costs than existing institutions. As retailers move up the wheel, they typically do so to increase sales, broaden the target market and improve their image. Scrambled Merchandising Whereas the wheel of retailing focuses on product quality, prices and customer service, scrambled merchandising involves a retailer increasing its width of assortment, the number of different product lines carried. Scrambled merchandising is popular for many reasons. Retailers want to increase overall revenues, fast selling, highly profitable goods and services are usually the ones added. Consumers make more impulse purchases. People like one-stop shopping, different target markets may be reached and the impact of seasonality and competition is reduced. In addition, the popularity of a retailer's original product lines may fall, causing it to scramble to maintain and grow the customer base. Scrambled merchandising is contagious. Drug stores, bookstores, florists, video stores and photo developing firms are all affected by supermarkets scrambled merchandising. About one-fifth of supermarket sales are from general merchandise, health and beauty aids and other no grocery items such as pharmacy products, magazines, flowers and video rentals. Cost Containment and Value Driven Retailing With a cost containment approach, retailers strive to hold down both initial investments and operating costs. Many firms use this strategy because of intense competition from discounters, the need to control complicated chain or franchise operations, high land and construction costs, the volatility of the economy and a desire to maximize productivity. Cost containment can be accomplished through one or more of these approaches. Standardizing operating procedures, store layouts, store size and product offerings. Using secondary locations, freestanding units and locations in older strip centers and by occupying sites abandoned by others, second use locations. Placing stores in smaller communities where building regulations are less strict, labor costs are lower and construction and operating costs are reduced. Using inexpensive construction materials such as bare cinder block walls and concrete floors. Let's know the meaning of building brands. Branding consists of the name, symbol, term, sign, design or any combination of these that identify the goods and services of one company and differentiate from another. Branding is the visual voice of the company. A traditional definition of a brand was the name associated with one or more items in the product line that is used to identify the source of character of the items. Brand identity is based on a thorough understanding of the firm's customers, competitors and business environment. The brand identity needs to reflect the business strategy and the firm's willingness to invest in the programs needed for the brand to live up to its promise to customers. 
Strong brands enjoy customer loyalty, the potential to charge premium prices and considerable brand power to support new product and service launches. Establishing Brand Identity Brand identity is a unique set of brand associations implying a promise to customers and includes a core and extended identity. Core identity is the central, timeless essence of the brand that remains constant as the brand moves to new markets and new products. Core identity broadly focuses on product attributes, service, user profile, store ambience, and product performance. Extended identity is woven around brand identity elements organized into cohesive and meaningful groups that provide brand texture and completeness and focuses on brand personality, relationship, and strong symbol association. Brand association, a set of brand associations, enable a brand to develop a rich and clear brand identity. While some customers may attach greater importance to functional benefits, emotional value helps the brand stand above others. Building brand associations requires a company to understand its brand as well as competitors' brands through customer research. Customer research should study existing and prospective customers, former customers, industry experts, and intermediaries. Brand strengths associated with beliefs and values are the most powerful and most difficult to imitate. Brand orientation. Brand orientation is a brand building model that focuses on brands as strategic resources. Brand orientation is an approach in which the processes of the organization revolve around the creation, development and protection of brand identity in an ongoing interaction with target customers with the aim of achieving lasting competitive advantages in the form of brands. Brand orientation focuses on developing brands in a more active and deliberate manner, starting with the brand identity as a strategic platform, 
it can be said that as a consequence of this orientation the brand becomes an unconditional response to customer needs and wants sales from production on indian lands total fossil fuel sales from production on indian lands were virtually unchanged in 2012 but there were offsetting changes in the individual fuels sales of crude oil produced on indian lands increased 56% to 31 million barrels in 2012 reaching the highest recorded level over the period for which data are available 2003 to 2012 sales of natural gas from indian lands decreased by 1% to 251 billion cubic feet in 2012 sales of natural gas plant liquids ngpl produced on indian lands increased by 11% in 2012 to 4 million barrels sales of coal from production on indian lands dropped 14% to 19 million short tons in 2012 the doi program offices continually collect sales and royalty payment data on fossil fuel sales of production from federal and indian lands around february each year onrr reports sales data it has collected Sales are assigned to the fiscal year in which they occur, not necessarily the same year royalties were collected. Audits conducted by ONRR result in revisions to data reported. This report is based on information reported to and processed by ONRR as of March 15, 2013. The recently updated data provided by ONRR for 2003 through 2011 generally fall within 2% of the volumes EIA reported with some exceptions the largest percentage revisions were 18% and 16% increases in federal onshore ngpl sales from production in 2010 and 2011 respectively non revenue volumes which only occur from production on the federal offshore had revisions ranging from 11% to 14% in 2010 and 2011 for natural gas and ngpl and upward revision of 12% for crude oil in 2009 non fuel retailing non fuel retailing nfr is a relatively new concept in indian petro retail industry it started in late 90s when shell started selling fuel at the fully automated petrol pumps and started providing car wash services and the petro car programs to its customers since then non fuel retailing has changed a lot now in the end let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture retailing is a vast and fast industry it provides a diversity of size and character of business rarely encountered in other industry sectors The vertical marketing system usefully depicts a more realistic view of the retail industry. Around one third of consumer expenditure takes place through retail outlets, and the retail industry employs one in nine workers. In the matured and developed markets of G8 countries, in most product categories, retail provision is high, with multiple choices for the customer. Brand identity is a unique set of brand associations implying a promise to customers and includes a core and extended identity.